This week's Torah portion introduces us to the Nazir, the Nazarite, a man or a woman who feels that his or her physical passions are overwhelming them. And so they take a vow of abstinence. Once they become a Nazir, they can't drink wine, can't eat great products, can't take a haircut or shave. Now we can understand the story of Samson and Delilah. And can't come into contact with a dead body. At the end of the term of the vow, that person's called holy. And they bring some sacrifices to God. But one of the sacrifices is a sin sacrifice. Why? What was the sin? Some commentators say the sin is coming back down from that holy, lofty level to regular life when the body typically dominates the soul. But others say no. The reason for the sin sacrifice is to remind the Nazir and us that we as Jews are not meant to be monks. We're not meant to live ascetic lifestyles. Instead, we're meant to take the permitted pleasures that God gave us in this world and elevate them, use them, bringing them up from the level of the physical to the spiritual. In fact, the sages tell us that when we get to heaven, we're called to account for any physical pleasures that God gave us that we didn't enjoy. For me, I have a complicated, checkered past when it comes to wine, because I didn't drink wine or any alcohol until I was in my 40s. Tasted it when I was young, didn't like it, figured, why kill brain cells? But one Shabbos a number of years ago, I was invited to Wayville friend's house, and I was going with another friend. The friend with whom I was traveling said, I'll buy a couple bottles of wine. You can reimburse me for half the price. I said, great. We arrived. I said, what do I owe you? He said, 75 bucks. I said, 75 bucks? Why am I paying for both bottles? He said, knucklehead, each bottle is $75. I said, 75 bucks a bottle? What's in the bottle? Diamonds? He said, I bought two really nice bottles for our friend, our host. I said, fine. Give him the 75 bucks. That night, our host decanted the first bottle. And everybody's pouring and they're swirling the wine around in their glasses and sniffing it and drinking it and ooing and eyeing. And I said, I paid 75 bucks for that bottle. I think I'm going to try it. So to the surprise of my friends, I poured myself some, tried it, and it was fantastic. I came home after Shabbos, announced to my wife that I was a wine drinker. She said, what are you talking about? The next thing you know, we have a wine fridge in our house. Stop by sometime if you want to enjoy some fine wine over Shabbos. But I still don't drink whiskey, and I still don't drink beer. And I wonder, when I get up to heaven, hopefully in many years, is God going to say, dude, why don't you drink beer? We don't have any up here in heaven. It was really good. I gave it to you down there, and you were supposed to try the permitted pleasures that I gave you. Same reason why I've had a choice in a nice hotel between an ocean or mountain view and a city view. I always take the ocean or mountain view because I want to see God's handiwork. Similarly, if you have the opportunity to go visit one of the beautiful sights in the world, Take that opportunity and go see those beautiful sights that God put here for our enjoyment. And finally, particularly for the men out there watching, you don't have to buy the most expensive shirt or tie or suspenders, but at least learn how to make that tie and wear it properly under your collar. As Jews, we're here as God's representatives to spread his light in the world. So physical appearance is important. Make sure you look right. You look good. Don't walk around looking like a schlump.